Dragon Ball Z Movie 2, the world's strongest, is about an evil scientist, Dr. Willow, of whom only the brain is left, wanting to transfer his mind to another body, the body of the strongest warrior on Earth. Like most Dragon Ball Z movies, it can't fit to the main timeline, but can be watched after the science saga. It will, like many other movies, have homages to recent major things that happen in the latest arc, like using a unique technique. The appeal of the movie is also that this is the first time Masaroshi is involved in fighting in the sea era, since he is retired since the original Dragon Ball from fighting, since the younger generation surpassed him and there is no need for him to fight. But because the antagonist still believes Roshi to be the strongest, he ended up being involved, giving them a reality call when that turns out not to be the case. The henchmen in this movie are also possessing unique powers, giving usually amazing fights visually, where Goku has to use a move for different purposes to overcome their powers. The main characters, or rather the main cast, behave like they normally do. Uh, Gohan struggles with his needs and his wants, meaning should he study or spend time with Piccolo? That being a trend in uh, future movies too. Krillin would usually help out in combat, while Piccolo starting his tradition to save Gohan. Uh, Goku is your generic heroic self, which is typical for Rainbow Z movies. Dr. Willow is very analytic and doesn't recklessly rush into action, unlike his assistant, Dr. Kochin, who is a close friend and also did a mistake that cost his life despite Dr. Willow warning him. Uh, the movie struggles to stand on its own. And while Dr. Willow has a unique goal, he is still a Dragon Ball Z villain who does what most Dragon Ball villains do when they are cornered. Another thing is that is, the movie doesn't have any grandiose moments in the final. The fights are good, but nothing feels amazing enough to go back and rewatch it since most of its best scenes are just homages. Even the student mentor Kamehameha isn't remembered well by fans, which is unique to this movie. Also, this uh, is a confusing part with timeline placement. But Rainbow Z movies can be considered their own story far removed from the main plot, since they can't fit. There are references made uh, directly about stuff that happened in the anime, which can confuse the viewers. Lastly, how Dr. Willow is defeated is very similar to your average Dragon Ball Z movie defeat, which can be used against this movie because it happens the first time. Overall, to get out most of, most out of this movie, you need to watch it before the others uh, that come after it, since it will end up feeling repetitive. It is still a good movie, if you haven't watched it, uh, give it a shot.